Hello and welcome. My name is Kaiser and today we are checking out mini healers. Uh, mini healers basically put you in the shoes of a healer of a party. Kind of like in an MMORPG, you guys will be going through dungeons and you play as the healer. So, you know, if you've ever played anything, World of Warcraft, Final Fantasy XI, XIV, anything like that. You know, and if you've never, if you've always had that anxiety of playing a healer, and you never went through and did it, this might be the game for you. Um, I, I pretty much will come from World of Warcraft and Final Fantasy XIV. Did play XI, but mainly fourteen. And I'm a tank. Never really actually uh, healed. So this will be a little bit different for me. Uh, this game was developed and published by Sad Doge. Uh, the game has been out for about a month. It came out on April 24th of this year. And uh, it is in Steam Early Access. But it is currently setting at 97 positive user reviews out of 146 uh, taken from its early access steam page it says the game currently has 35 unique bosses to challenge over 300 unique artifacts to collect over 23 spells to customize in-depth skill trees with three classes and over 100 nodes crafting system to upgrade and modify artifacts collected over 150 achievements and simply sorry simple procedurally generated and game dungeons now I have have got about an hour's worth of experience into this game but let's go ahead we will start a new game go into normal mode you have a normal normal and a hardcore mode but it says this one's kind of in beta so of course expect bugs with that S expect bugs with any kind of steam early access but let's go ahead we'll start that all of our guys go into a little dungeon here okay and we're gonna go ahead and start our first tutorial fight welcome to the vault legend says that a long time ago that long time ago many powerful artifacts were in here it is now up to you and your party to find and acquire them these are your party members. You have a ranger, berserker, tank, and then you, the healer. These are your party members, and they will automatically attack the boss for you. Your job as the healer is to keep them healthy at all times. Da, 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 da. All right. Uh-oh. Looks like your tank has taken some damage. Let's heal him up. Select him by clicking anywhere on his portrait. You can also select party members by pressing QWER. Uh, try doing that, and uh, I don't know why. Seem to have a little bit of trouble with that. I'd rather click on him and then use uh, the 1 through 7 on the keyboard. Anyways, great job. Let's cast our first spell, Lesser Heal, to heal him up. Hover on over, hover onto spells or icons to see what it does, then press 1 to cast on tank. Alright, numero 1, bam, go. Amazing! That should be all you need to know. To beat the Bone Knight, venture into the vault, and find the greatest treasures within. Careful not to run out of mana, or you won't be able to cast spells. Alright. So, so far, you know, of course, very good first boss. Uh, you know, just normal Bone Knight, Undead Knight. Oh, better go ahead and start healing and paying attention to the actual fight. Not a very hard one, of course. He doesn't really do much. Uh oh, looks like your tank's bleeding. Don't worry, here's a new skill that can help. Unlocked Renew. Renew is great for healing a single target over time. Try slicing the tank, then press 2 to cast it. All right. I forgot what it's called. It's not a dot, but I guess it's a, it's a, you know, a heal, of course. More dots. I'm sure that's never been say, said to anyone playing this game. All right, here we got him down to 35%. Uh, these little skulls right here indicate where he's about to attack. This here is you. Um, and if you die, um, you can no longer help your party. I haven't really checked too far into the skill tree, so there might actually be some things that you can do that maybe self-resurrects you. I'm imagining somewhere down the line there will also be abilities where you can resurrect party members, but for now we don't have that. But all right, victory! Got a new record, beat him in 58 seconds. 30 more XP because nobody died and everyone leveled up. All right, so now to Haven. Haven's kind of like your base of operations. Welcome to the Hidden Haven. Here you can rest and prepare yourself for your next fight. Visit the talent room to learn different talents and masteries. Every time you level up, you will gain a town point. Feel free to also check out other items in the room. So, like I said, here's our main arch HQ. As we level up, we'll unlock different things. But right now, we have a talent room. This is kind of like, obviously, your talent trees. Your uh, trophies, and achievements, and so on and so forth. And then here's where we venture forth to go it further down to the vault. You have settings. And then you also have some miscellaneous stats and info. Let's go ahead. Let's pick uh, something to level up. Yeah, that just tells you right there. Pick something to level up. Uh, you have basically three different tr uh, trees that you can go down Druid, as I said, use powerful healing over time. Priest, auras and defensive abilities. Knock an occultist, offensive magic. Um, for the first one, I think I pretty much will went with, uh, let's go ahead and just increase normal heal power just so that we can keep going. 
exit out of that and let's go ahead and venture further looks like this is what we have going on right now um, when you hover over it does tell you what you have to do uh, in order to proceed so right here it says defeat brutal sapitus I'll show you in a minute what it means by brutal that just basically means the difficulty because every time you fight one of these guys first you fight them on normal then brutal and then you can do insane of course the heart or uh, the bigger the difficulty the harder it's going to be for you but the one thing you have too is after you beat them you will want to go back and try again because right here I have to defeat the boss on this difficulty to unlock this chest basically what that means is it will tell me what special item that that boss that boss drops kind of like right here tell me the drop chance and it also will tell me what it is so I can kind of go in and at least kind of see if I want to have my tank to have this health physical resist and then bigger block chance I should keep going after this guy until I get it 34% drop chance so that would tell you at least after three or four fights you should have that all right we already got the bone knight out of the way completed him once on the normal mode now let's go after um, I guess super angry chef Ramsey uh, named Gump he lost his legs obviously to some kind of horrendous cooking accident but uh normal uh, this right here too which I forgot to go on the first guy Click on the spell book, it'll tell you all his stats. So right here, spell power, 132, attack speed. Looks like he's very slow. So imagine that he's probably going to hit us a little harder. Uh, this right here is your normal elements, except this one right here means physical. So that means 100% of all of his damage is going to be physical. Defense, health right here. He has no resistances to anything. No health regen, no block chance, so on and so forth. Skills will also tell us too what he's capable of. So uh, he summons a little slime to help him. That's right here. And the only thing that that extra mob does is it just heals him. So we want to try and make sure that anytime that mob, pop, mob pops up, we take him down. He's got Fearful Howl, Strike Fear into Target's Heart, heavily reducing his or her damage. Then Decaying Wind, causing Target to lose health over time. Got another bleed. But anyways, let's go ahead and start. Fight him. in Gage. Yeah, go after him, boyos. Go ahead and do a renew just to get that going. Oh no! Watch out for any harmful debuffs on your character. Make sure to hover on each debuff to see the effects. We unlocked Dispel. Dispel can remove some harmful effects on your party. Yellow box can be dispelled. Red box cannot be dispelled. We've got something we can dispel right here. Let's go ahead and use that. Bam. Keep the fight going. He's about to hit the whole party with Decaying Wind. Cannot dispel that. We're just going to go ahead and eat the damage, but it's not much, luckily. Oh, we're going to go ahead and click on him. You can either click on... Okay, just like it's about to say, it looks like Gump has summoned a minion, but he's already dead. Clicking on enemy will make the party switch focus to it. You can also press tab to switch focus. I would definitely say that the tab is the better option, just so that you can focus more on what you're actually doing over here. Uh, dispel, please. Go ahead and pop another heal. Renew. Keep it going here. And we're about to all get hit with that decaying wind again, I am sure. But he is almost dead. Less than 10%. Boom. Boss is down. Share the loots. Victory again. And they're talking about loot there. They're probably, you know, doing like what everybody does whenever they beat a boss. Like, oh boy, I hope I really get that item. And then the item drops and you roll on it. And, you know, you, you roll like a 97. And you're like, oh boy, no one's going to beat that. And then the tank goes and rolls a 99. And there's like, oh, cool, I'm going to use this on an alt character. And, you know, then you, uh, you know, then you, uh grumble and mumble and then you just generally hate life so all right looks like you got yourself an artifact there let's go visit the armor in hidden haven to learn more about it so on top of not only having the responsibility of healing the party you also have to equip them basically what this says is all the items that you equip um, affects everyone and you can use a little anvil to upgrade it so right here everything is what your uh, healer I, I keep wanting to call her a priest. I'm assuming it's a her, because uh, that, that's what it kind of looks like. But um, I have all these different things you can equip. So I can equip this right here, simple sword, plus 7 tank physical damage, plus 15 berserker physical damage. Double click, boom, she's got it. 40 tank maximum health, and 1% to tank block chance, boom, got it on there. So this affects her. So not only are you the healer, and you have to deal with the responsibility for that, but you basically have to baby their equipment. Now, everyone does level up, everyone does boost up, you know, things like that. But uh, you got to hold their hand on that, too. 
So have a bunch of different loadouts you can do. So I'm assuming down the road there will be different things like, oh, you'll be fighting some kind of monster where it's like, oh, some hell beast. So, of course, they're going to have like, you know, fire attack out the wazoo. So you're obviously not going to want to try and have your guys do fire attack. So you could probably switch out to a different loadout and uh, say give your guys all ice attacks. But we're going to go ahead. We don't really have much to go on. Go into the talent room. We have one available point that we can stick into anything. Uh, if you've ever played any kind of RPGs or anything like that, you're probably uh, similar with, with how this goes. But so basically what's going on is I got to put, I believe it's four. Yep. So I got to put a total of four points in any one on this row. And then I unlock the next row. All different abilities. And then down here too, I actually have some that automatically unlock uh, once I uh, get a certain level. And... Of course, I have to get the appropriate uh, amount of points in there. So after level five, I will get all of these things. Uh, it's kind of strange because uh, you know by the time you get level five, if you just focus in here, you will you will you won't have enough to get there. So, but I guess it's just basically telling you if you heavily focus into one, you know, uh, if you heavily focus into one, you will still have to uh, wait. Um, so I think for the next, I did that the first time. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and increase everyone's health. And the great thing is, too, like, say um, you go, uh, I don't, you know, on top of having talent loadouts, uh, even though I just put a point in here, I can go ahead and remove it. And if I want to put another one here, boom. But we're not going to do that. Let's go ahead and put this back in. Resilience, just so everyone can uh, last a little bit longer. And let's go ahead, let's do another battle. This time, uh, looks like we're fighting someone who was rejected as a bad guy on the uh, Princess and the Frog. You know, just kind of like his face. So let's go ahead. Same thing. Looks like his spell power is not as high as the last guy, but he does go a little faster. I uh, don't think we really need to uh, go through here. I guess we can look at the skills real quick. Icy Tomb, freeze the target, make them unable to move or receive healing. Sunburst, burst of damage, basically amplifies with other sunburst debuffs on other members. Ice shards, shoot out multiple ice shards, and ice armor, make the body hard as, I, hard as ice, reducing all incoming damage. I believe in this damage we will also basically get Dispel. So right here is the part where it tells you what all the elements are. Summon damage belongs to a certain element. Uh, Ngage! Okay, doing okay so far. Let's go ahead and do a renew. And just like any other MMORPG boss, your guys are usually the normal size, and the boss is five times your height. Oh, and there was that little ice shard attack. I know another one of the abilities you get later on, you can a, uh, apply a shield. And so that really helps when he does that move, because the shield uh, blocks so much damage before the shield goes away. Um, but so right here, some enemies will cast powerful buffs on themselves, pay attention to them, and remove them as need be. Unlock, negate. So that's basically dispel, but... When your enemy has it, I guess I could have showed it before I dispelled it, but basically any kind of buffs the enemy gets pops up right underneath their health bar. Makes it a little easier to kind of pay attention to that. I know one of the reasons why I never uh, go to be a healer in MMORPGs is because I'm always afraid I'm going to totally miss something like a dispel on a friendly or a debuff that I need to apply to a boss on top of attacking, so on and so forth. Um, so we got some more XP, leveled up again, got some different items uncommon axe and a wand so we'll go ahead um continue there is no uh when you hit continue there is no like oh further on down the line for that monster um that just takes you back to the normal room where you can pick the bosses but all right so now we picked so now we unlocked the skill room in the hidden haven it's so basically what the skill room means we can go ahead and take that out uh on top of upgrading your abilities in this screen see right here which obviously we don't have whatever that pearl is you can also determine what you're going to put in your cast bar you can only have seven spells unfortunately but we do have another one here radiant heal longer cast time but heals all party members for a moderate amount and of course it tells you stats to base heal 74 heal power bonus 28 so current healing does 91 and it can critically heal right so um of course as you get some of those other abilities they'll pop up right here but other than that, we don't really have anything to do. I guess we can go into the talent room. We can pick something else. Um, let's go ahead. 
yeah, let's go ahead and do this. I kind of like this ability because not only does it increase your mana, because in the next couple of fights, uh, you uh, do run out of mana pretty quick because it kind of ramps up a little bit of difficulty. Not too bad, but a little bit. Uh, but the great thing about this one, every time Renew heals a target, there's a 15% chance to restore 5 mana. So that doesn't seem like much. You think, wow, 15% for 5 mana, but that's talking about every tick. And uh, Renew ticks uh, for like 5 seconds, once every second. And uh, as you increase the... Uh, as you increase... Uh, skill points into renew some of them will increase for longer tick times all right next fight looks like we're basically going into reject jaina proudmore sisters one of course is uh Sol solaria and lunaria uh you know mom and mom and dad named them appropriately somehow uh this one i don't know if there's going to be like more fights like this down the line but this one's also kind of interesting because basically one's one represents the sun and one represents the moon and there'll be a mechanic in here where one will be invulnerable while the other one is vulnerable and you have to kind of um switch targets and once you defeat one the other one becomes stronger so in, if once again if you've played mmorpgs which even though you don't have to have played them to be able to play this game. This is one of those fights where, oh yeah, you, we need to kind of make sure that we hammer them both down at the same time a little bit, just so that one isn't ending up being overpowered for the majority of the fight. So this right here is our warning. Be aware that sometimes there can be an additional environmental effects. Now I don't know if uh, in this engage screen if the developer wanted this, but right here the environmental effect is ticking down. So honestly what we could do if we want to start fighting her, fighting her, or applying damage to her or her, we can just honestly wait until um, until we get the one we want. So we're going to wait until this tick goes down and engage! Alright, so we're going to go ahead and fight. Not too much damage right off the bat. Of course we're going to get hit here. Go ahead and do a heal here. And now we need to change. Gonna go ahead and hit tab. And do that. Not too much damage, but it looks like our Berserker and our tank was stunned. So they're not gonna be applying some damage. And ooh, taking night damage. Oh, need to switch two. This is where things get, like I said, a little bit hectic, but it's luckily not too bad. I always forget that my dispel has kind of a uh, cooldown, so I can't hit it right away. Need to swap again. Oh, okay. That one hurt a little bit. All right, keep on going. I think I'm going to go ahead and do one of my Radiant Heals to kind of heal everyone a little bit. Okay, there we go. Now, she's only at 30%, so she's not going to last too much longer. She's not going to be too overpowered with her, I'm assuming, her sister dying. Um, I did try this fight on a harder difficulty, though, and... Uh, as you probably already noticed, my man is running pretty low, and on the harder difficulties, if you definitely do not pay attention, and you just continue to damage one sister and not apply the other one while uh, the barrier's up and thereby nulling the damage you do, you know, one's health will drop way below, and I think when I eventually caught on, uh, when the first sister died, the other one was still at 70%. And uh, I, I did not win that fight because she was just doing so much damage that I, I just couldn't keep up, and I died. All right, got some more artifacts here. Go ahead, we will go back to Haven. I think we will do uh, one more fight. Let me go to the armory room. Oh, I, I left that on loadout too, on accident. Um, but so we can equip two weapons. I think, let's see, that one's kind of eh. So we'll go ahead and do that. So this is uh, going to do plus 40 Berserker lightning damage, so now he will do some lightning damage. And then, I'm going to go ahead and put this right here too, get a little bit more heal power. It says 48 healer physical damage. Um, I have not found yet if there is a point to where um, the healer does damage, or maybe I just haven't noticed and she's been doing damage this entire time. I don't think she does, but now I do know there are some abilities that she uses later on, I just don't think I've seen physical. Alright, Gift of the Moon, 44 heal, uh, heal power, I believe that goes here, yep. And see right here, 2.9 party ice resist. So later on, I might hold on to this just because if I fight something that's got a, you know, a lot of ice damage 
and I have several items that do that, I will last longer. So, also gives me mana regen. I didn't get, uh, last time when I got this Gift of the Moon Relic, it was different. Um, I know it didn't give me mana regen. I know it gave me heal power and party ice resistance. So, I'm assuming those probably mean like, oh, you, you will always get this and this, and then the ones in white are totally random. Kind of like in a lot of MMORPGs. I'm probably going to be saying that quite a bit. Okay, uh, talent room, we have one point in here. Uh, let's see, what's this? Uh, increase heal power three. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and put another one on this one. Yeah, it only increases heal power by three, but I use lesser heal a lot, so that's going to boost it by 8%, and then radiant heal I, I use every now and then. So, all right. So now we are going to go in what is deemed the final boss fight of Sepitus. I'm, I'm guessing that's what you pronounce it. Uh, first time I fought this boss... I, uh, I kind of fumbled the ball because, once again, uh, you should definitely go in and kind of see what the boss is going to do. Basically, what this boss does, summon crystal, but it's not going to be like the uh, mob that the uh, second boss summoned. Basically, what this crystal does, it will occasionally uh, silence, or silence the target, making them unable to cast certain spells. Uh, harden the target's weapon, making him or her deal increased amount of damage. However, what he does to the boss when he is there. Let me see where it shows. Oh, other effects. Uh, you have no mana regeneration. Hitting the crystal will regain a small bit of mana back while healing Sepitus. Because if we look at the crystal, he has 36 million health. And uh, I tried to whack away at him first. And uh, yeah, yeah, that, that, that fight didn't end well. Luckily, Sepitus only has a little bit under 16,000. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, eventually, I was able to do this fight without really attacking the crystal. I mean, it does heal him like it says, but luckily it's not too bad. You will definitely get more mana back uh, than heal him for. So go ahead and do a renew. He's going to do that. Now, uh, after the boss basically destroyed me the first time, I went and leveled up a little bit, actually had an ability that would uh, recover my mana for a while. This is a, also another good fight where the uh, Renew tick is good, because once again, every time Renew ticks, it uh, it uh, has a chance of giving you some mana back. So right here, my mana's going up pretty good, but he is also getting healed. Luckily, he's not getting healed for too much. We need to go ahead and make sure. Go ahead and pop a Radiant Heal. Oh, this might be bad. Oh, my. Oh, my gosh. And I'm silent. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't die. Don't die. Please. Don't. Oh, no. I got to hit him. Oh, this is about to be bad. Please stop. Please. Uh, okay. Uh, Berserker. Uh, it's your turn. Your turn to tank. Oh, no. Okay. Okay. We're doing well here. This is why I don't heal in parties. This is why I don't do it. Because right now, this is when in the... Uh, in the chat window, they'd be like, oh, where to go? Where to go, healer? Healer trash, vote to kick. And, uh, you know, th this is the part where I'm, I'm just like, I'm, I'm out of mana defeat. Death is only the beginning. Well, luckily, uh, there is no, uh, at least if there is one, I haven't found one yet, there is no disadvantage or malice to losing. You know, you don't lose XP, you don't do anything like that. You can just basically kind of rework your uh, rework your party, mess some stuff around. Like I said, luckily you can remove and say, oh, I want to put it in here. You can do that too. Um, you know, not a problem. You can change your loadouts to fit whatever situation you're in. But yeah, um, don't know if I will do a series on these This or on this one. This was more of just kind of like a first look in case you've never maybe seen this game. Uh, it's only $7.99 on Steam, so uh, not too much of an investment if you're looking for a cheap game to kind of play. Um, so far from what I've seen reading some of the reviews, it, it says for an early access game, this game is fleshed out pretty good. And it looks like the developers have said they are thinking of looking between 6 to 12 months of development, which is kind of a normal for when you see uh, Steam Early Access games. But yeah, um, I'm probably going to kind of keep playing this on my own time. Uh, it looks pretty fun. Um, like I said, got I've got about an hour of just 
play on another save file. But I am legitimately having uh, fun with this. It doesn't seem like it's too bad on the grinding. Um, but yeah, so I uh, hope you've kind of enjoyed this first look. My name is Kaiser, and I will see you later. Let me know if this is something that you'd like to have a series on, and uh, we, might, uh, we might make that happen. But anyways, uh, until the next video, see you later. Bye.